Hello and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about how to simplify healthcare compliance with uh, HITRES CSS and Tripwire. My name is Onyeka and I'm a Senior Product Manager at Tripwire. Today I'm joined by Michael Parisi, who is the VP of Assurance Strategy and Community Development at HITRUST. Today we're going to be talking with you about the challenges in healthcare, the benefits of using the HITRUST CSS, which Michael will cover, and then I'll come back at the end to talk about how Tripwire and HITRUST together can help you solve those challenges. And as we go through this presentation, think about the current challenges in your organization, in your environment, and how you can leverage what we discussed today to solve those challenges. And if you have any questions as we go through the webinar, you can enter them in your screen, and we'll address that at the end of the webinar. In healthcare, we're focused on ensuring patient care and safety. This is why HIPAA was instituted to ensure that we can guard the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of patient data. Because when we don't do that, it can lead to adverse effects to patients. Let's take integrity, for example. Healthcare providers and insurance providers rely on patient data to determine proper care. So protecting the integrity of that data is critical for accurate diagnosis and treatment. So really fundamentally, we are here today talking about how to secure your environment because we want to help you ensure patient care and safety. And the scale of the problem, the cybersecurity challenge in healthcare continues to grow. In 2019, there were about 41 million patient records breached, which is way more than what was breached in 2018. So the scale and the, and the challenge of securing patient data in healthcare continues to grow. And so the first step we take as responsible cybersecurity professionals in healthcare is to ensure that we are compliant. So we want to be compliant with standards and best practice frameworks like HIPAA or NIST or the CIS standards. And when cardholder data is present, PCI compliance is also important. So while compliance in and of itself doesn't secure your environment, compliance when done as part of an overall security program can help healthcare organizations protect their environment, and of course, avoid fines from the Office of Civil Rights for HIPAA violations. So there are a few challenges with compliance. The first challenge is, how do you assess the gap between where you are and where you need to be to achieve compliance? So how do you know if you're compliant? The first starting point for any compliance project is establishing an initial view of compliance, but the assessment is often difficult and time consuming, especially when you're looking at all the different standards you need to be compliant with. Another challenge is that the breadth of assets that need to be covered just keeps growing. It's not just servers or desktops that need to be compliant, but network devices, infrastructure, virtual images, cloud images, and more. And because organizations often don't retire legacy assets at the same rate that they acquire new assets, the scale of this challenge just keeps growing. And the last challenge I'll touch on today is audits. Now, we all want to pass audits. But preparing for those audits to ensure that we can pass those audits is challenging, especially because we have various standards to comply with, and, and those standards are often changing. Now, audits are especially challenging in healthcare because the typical healthcare organization underinvests in cybersecurity. The healthcare roughly invests about 4 to 7 percent of revenue versus 15% of revenue in cybersecurity in other industries. So audit preparation is, is challenging because there are multiple audits 
it's involved, it's time consuming, and in many organizations it can just be a full-time job, especially when there's manual effort involved. Tripwire Enterprise can help you with all three challenges regardless of the regulatory standards you need to comply with. To help you know if you're compliant, PE or Tripwire Enterprise provides an initial baseline of every asset in your environment, letting you know your compliance posture. And if you're worried that you don't have enough coverage for all your assets, Tripwire Enterprise provides both agent-based and agent-less coverage for thousands of platforms. So even if we don't have a platform or policy coverage that matches your environment out of the box, we can still provide additional value through custom policy. And lastly, we provide continuous compliance, which ensures that we are helping you reduce the time that you spend preparing for an audit. Because each audit season doesn't require you know, additional effort from, from, uh, from the beginning because we are already helping you ensure continuous compliance. We also have out-of-the-box reports, which reduces the amount of ad hoc work or reports needed to prove compliance. We've heard many customers say you know, leveraging our out-of-the-box reports helps them go through audits so much faster. In addition, we also have a managed service offering expert ops where we act as an extension of your security team so we can help you ensure that your environment is in compliance. For compliance, Tripwire Enterprise delivers its value in four stages. The first is scoping the assets and the environment for which compliance is needed. So Tripwire Enterprise provides a way to tag the assets. It also provides a way to create smart node groups so you can organize assets in your environment in a way that makes sense for policy compliance in your organization. We also have the largest library of policy and platform combination, so that allows customers to have a really solid starting point for any regulation or standard that applies to their environment. Now once the scoping is complete, customers can move on to a baseline process. Tripwire Enterprise allows customers to create an initial baseline for assets in your environment and then detect changes from that baseline. So that includes monitoring the elements that are included in those policies that you applied in the scoping process. So we scope what's in the environment for compliance, and then we baseline those assets so that we can monitor them for changes as time goes on, ensuring continuous compliance. The third step is measurement. This is where customers would view the deviations from those baselines that they've established. They can also report on policy compliance, and they, they would also get proactive alerts about changes in their environment. So we're constantly monitoring changes in your environment, and you know what policies have been applied, and so that way you get alerts that can help you take much more effective action to ensure that you're in compliance. There are also policy compliance dashboards available so that you can see at a glance where you stand with respect to compliance in your environment. And the last step is remediation. So here we provide customers with detailed change data, including really important information about who made the change, when the change happened, and the impact to your environment so that you can effectively take action. And we also provide remediation guidance for policy violations that have been detected so we can help you take appropriate steps to achieve and maintain compliance over time. Tripwire and HITRUST have partnered together to help organizations deal with the challenges of compliance. And today we're specifically talking about how Tripwire and HITRUST can help healthcare organizations address the challenges of compliance. So now I'll hand it over to Michael Parisi from HITRUST to talk more about HITRUST and the framework, and then I'll come back at the end to talk about how Tripwire and HITRUST together can help you with HITRUST compliance. 
Thank you, Anika, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm, I'm excited to take you through the programs that HITRUST has in place, not only within the healthcare industry, but across other industries. I'm really excited about the partnership that we have in place with Tripwire that will help enable organizations to ensure compliance with aspects of the high trust programs. First, let's spend a few minutes talking about what, what high trust is and what our role is within the marketplace and the different programs that we have in place to help you proactively manage the protection of sensitive information and mitigate the risk across your organizations. As we go through the next handful of slides, I'll take you through the most comprehensive programs that we have in place relative to standards, tools, resources, and methodologies to help protect personal information, not only internally within your own organizations, but also externally as part of our third-party risk management methodology. So who are we? When you look at high trust as an organization, we were born in the healthcare industry, and arguably still the strongest within healthcare, but definitely an industry agnostic set of different programs and tools that organizations can adopt. We were founded back in 2007 under the premise of when you look at this concept of compliance, not only with certain regulations, but as Anika mentioned, other standards, control frameworks, et cetera, it was very cumbersome for organizations to do that in an, in an efficient and effective way. So High Trust was formed and born to look at all the different requirements for which there's over 44 different authoritative sources included within the framework and define a process by which organizations can implement one set of requirements, assess against that one set of requirements, and be in a position to report to multiple different stakeholders based upon that one assessment. As part of that, not only was there the development of an enterprise risk management controls-based framework incorporating all of these requirements, control frameworks, and regulations, but we also needed to develop an assessment methodology that defined how organizations can perform an appropriate assessment that provides the highest level of transparency and reliability to stakeholders. In addition to that, we developed an assurance program that helps organizations gain a level of reliability through assessments that are executed against that framework. And ultimately, putting solutions in place whereby organizations can share those assessments electronically, not only internally within their organization, but also externally from a third-party customer perspective. There's over thousands of security and privacy assessments that have been performed against the HITRUST CSF, the HITRUST Control Framework. And in addition to that, there's hundreds of thousands of organizations that are sharing those assessments internally and externally today. As Anika mentioned before, across multiple industries, but especially within healthcare, there's a significant need for organizations to prove that they have implemented certain standards within their own organization and assessed against that from a compliance perspective, but also to prove that they have a level of diligence in place to manage their third parties against those different standards as well, whether it be from a regulation, a compliance-related requirement, or certain stakeholders such as HHS and OCR that is asking these organizations to ensure they are selecting their third parties appropriately and also ensuring that there are assessments relative to the security and privacy posture that are being consumed and reviewed against those organizations. When you look at the resources that High Trust provides, as I mentioned before, really three different legs of the stool. Not only an integrated comprehensive framework that scales across organizations based upon their risk profile, covering over 44 different authoritative sources, an assessment methodology that is supported by defined nature, timing, and extent of testing that organizations must execute in order to support a valid assessment that gives the highest level of transparency 
into that organization relative to their security and privacy posture, but also an assurance program that layers in five different levels of quality assurance review that support any high trust assessment that's been validated within the marketplace, knowing that when you leverage that assessment, either internally or externally with your third parties, you know you have the highest level of reliable assessment that exists because of all the levels of quality assurance review that go into that assessment process. So recognizing all the challenges that exist within the healthcare industry, let's break those down into a little more detail and talk about how HITRUST has developed a comprehensive set of programs that we refer to as the HITRUST approach in order to address those challenges that exist not only from a covered entity perspective, but also from a third-party business associate standpoint. First and foremost, when we think about it through the lens of third-party risk management, or even internally relative to our own assessments, there's a significant number of assessments or reviews that we need to perform against all these different regulatory requirements that we need to provide comfort on, whether it's to our internal stakeholders, such as senior management, or the board, for example, regulators, or whether it be to our external stakeholders, customers, or prospective customers, et cetera. There is a significant level of effort that we are undergoing in order to answer proprietary information security questionnaires, support on-site audits from our customers or stakeholders, or even execute internal audit-related activities, as Anika mentioned before. There needs to be a way to eliminate this redundancy and truly put us in a position where we can do this in the most efficient and effective way possible. Really, the only way to do that is to recognize a comprehensive framework whereby if we execute one assessment against that one set of requirements and standards, we can satisfy all the different authoritative sources that we're being asked to report against. In addition to that, there's a need to not only implement but manage an efficient information risk management program within our organization. One of the giant challenges associated with that is making sure that it stays up to date. If you think about some of the frameworks that we may be leveraging today from an organizational perspective, whether they be proprietary, whether they be based off other standards such as ISO, NIST, et cetera, when you think about some of the different regulations that we need to ensure we are in compliance with, the burden primarily falls on us to ensure that our standards and our control frameworks are being maintained and ensuring that they are up to date as those relevant authoritative sources change, whether they be through regulatory updates or versions within that framework. What we've done through our CSF framework and through our assurance program is to make those updates for the organizations that are leveraging our framework and the program. Every time there's an update to the underlying authoritative standards, we update the HITRA CSF. We're taking that burden off of the organizations that may be doing it themselves today so that they can really focus on managing risk within the organization, knowing that we're updating not only the control framework but the reporting standards every time there are changes across multiple industries. In addition to that, there's a significant challenge to provide assurances, as I mentioned before, not only internal but also externally. So developing our assessment methodology allows organizations to determine what level of assurance they need to be providing to the marketplace and also allows them to communicate the level of testing that is behind that assessment. As we all know, not all assessments are created equal. There's multiple types of assessments that are conducted within the marketplace, and there's multiple types of assurance reports that are shared within the marketplace. However, what makes an assurance report the most valuable and the most reliable is the methodology behind it, what was done in order to produce that level of assurance and in order to produce that independent certification or report that's being leveraged in order to gain 
insight and transparency into that security and privacy posture within our organization. It's the collection of the CSF methodology and control framework, the process by which we update that on a periodic basis to reflect any changes in the underlying authoritative sources. The assessment methodology, whereby nature timing and extent of testing is defined and must be executed against in order to support a high trust assessment report. The assurance program, whereby those five levels of quality assurance review are executed that I'll go into um, a future slide in order to produce that level of assurance. And then ultimately the ability to share that report across many of our stakeholders. That is what makes up the high trust approach all rooted within a risk assessment process that starts the tailoring implementation and assessment against the framework. I referenced the elements of our approach on, on the prior slide, but here's a, a listing of them for you. Um, as I mentioned before, starting with the CSF, the Integrated Controls Framework, that is free for any organization to access through our website. Um, the Assurance Program that explains how an organization can tailor that control framework and also execute relevant assessments in line with providing the highest level of assurance. My CSF platform, which is a separate platform that allows organizations to manage their documentation associated with undergoing high trust assessments and also enterprise risk management attributes. Our assessor program, which is the foundation of our assurance methodology, whereby organizations must engage with independent third party auditors that we refer to as assessors and all listed on, on our website for which there's over 90 plus in order to validate the implementation, the scoring, and the documentation that management has in place to support compliance with the different controls that have been tailored relevant to their risk analysis and risk posture. Three different types of CSF assurance reports that organizations can execute and provide to the marketplace and their stakeholders, including a rapid assessment, a self-assessment, which is a management self-attestation, along with PRISMA scoring maturity models to support not only whether there are corrective action plans or gaps relative to the different control requirements that are in place aligned to the 44 different authoritative sources, but also a scoring maturity model that provides a level of transparency into how mature those programs are within that organization. And lastly, validated assessments. These are the assessments whereby management will go through, provide an assertion against all the requirements in addition to scoring, but also engage an independent third party to come in and validate what has been done in support of all those requirements. We also have a series of training classes that helps organizations understand the regulatory requirements that they must implement. It also helps them navigate the tailoring and the adoption of the framework in addition to utilizing the MyCSF platform in support of their assessments. And lastly, one of our newest programs is the High Trust Assessment Exchange that helps third parties share any and all of their high trust assessments with their stakeholders electronically. More importantly, it helps organizations manage their third parties through the exchange to understand where are they relevant to completing assessments that are in line with their contractual expectations, and also where are those third parties in closing any gaps that may be identified throughout the assessment process. As I mentioned before, when you look at all of the high trust programs and the high trust approach, it all starts with understanding the risk profile of a particular organization, whether it be our own organization or whether it be our third parties. That's what ultimately will drive how many different requirements a company needs to have in place and assess against in order to provide the appropriate level of assurance internally or externally. When you look at the CSF as, again, a certifiable 
risk and compliance based control framework. This diagram is not drawn to scale. However, it's drawn this way purposely. There is no silver bullet relative to any framework that exists within the marketplace. There are certain requirements that will lie outside the structure of the CSF in order to address certain things that are so specific from an industry to industry standpoint that it does not lend itself to standardization. However, as you can see, the majority of those different 44 authoritative sources are included within the framework 100% from a requirements perspective. As I mentioned before, in looking at those different authoritative sources, which we will see on, on the next slide, many of them are industry agnostic. However, all of them are certainly relevant to the healthcare industry. Here is a recent listing of the most common different authoritative sources that organizations are needing to either implement controls or requirements against to ensure compliance, assess against or provide some level of transparency to the marketplace relative to those different standards. By no means does this include all the different authoritative sources that are included within the framework. And on average, we're adding to five to seven different authoritative sources per release from a framework perspective. We're currently on a nine to 12 month release cycle, whereby we will release a new edition or version of the framework to address the following. Either A, changes in the underlying standards that you see listed on, on this slide, um, or B, the addition of new authoritative sources that our stakeholders within the marketplace ask us to add to the framework. You'll see some of the most common ones here that we are familiar with that are included 100% within the framework. For example, ISO 27001, 27002, different series of NIST, whether it be the cybersecurity framework, 800-122, and different international, federal, and statutory regulations such as GDPR, HIPAA, and currently, um, CCPA has now been added as part of version 9.3 as well. I'd like to spend a minute highlighting some aspects of the assurance program that I'd introduced on, on prior slides. I really want to focus in on this concept of five different levels of quality assurance review. How do you know as you pick up different assurance reports within the marketplace, whether they be SOC 2 reports, whether they be agreed upon procedures, whether they be other types of assessments that may exist, for example, a HIPAA risk assessment, how does that compare to a high trust assurance report? And what differentiates those within the marketplace? The five different levels of quality assurance review, I think, is one of the most important differentiators. What are those five different levels of quality assurance? It starts with the management assertion or self-attestation relative to performing a viable risk assessment, implementing all the requirements that come out of that risk assessment, and scoring themselves against the security and privacy posture and maturity that exists within their own organization. The second level of the review in the form of a validated assessment or a validated assessment that's used to submit for certification that can be achieved if minimum necessary scores relative to maturity are achieved. That second level is that independent third-party assessor that must come in and execute the assessment methodology to a certain level, nature, timing, and extent of testing that actually aligns to the AICPA requirements from a SOC reporting perspective in order to validate that what management has asserted to appears appropriate. The third level of quality assurance review is ensuring that those independent assessors have their own QA function within that organization. That group must be separate from the team that actually executed the engagement work or the assessment methodology. The fourth level of quality assurance is high trust. Once all of that information is submitted to high trust after the validation, we review 100% 
of all reports that come in the door. We do not do a sampling basis. Every report that comes in the door from every assessor is picked up, quality reviewed by us to ensure that the assessor, along with their own internal QA function, performed everything that they were supposed to do in addition to ensuring that management performed an appropriate risk assessment on the front end. Lastly, the fifth level of quality assurance review is our own compliance function. Our compliance function will audit our auditors who audits the auditors who audits management. So five different levels of quality assurance review that gives you the highest level of reliability. When you pick up a high trust assessment report, you know compared to other levels of third party assurance reporting, it has gone through more levels of quality assurance review than any other report or methodology within the marketplace. So if I'm an organization that would like to undergo an assessment against the high trust CSF, what does that typical process look like? And if I'm ultimately striving to obtain a high trust certification, what are the different steps that we usually see within the marketplace? First and foremost, like any type of an assessment that we undergo, what we usually see and what we highly recommend is that organizations undergo a readiness assessment. There's lots of value in undergoing a readiness assessment. First off, it helps you ensure that you're scoping it appropriately. Many organizations will have multiple different types of scopes that they're working through to identify what's right for them, what's right to satisfy their stakeholders within the marketplace or internally. That answer may change over time. There may be something that satisfies them today or in the future as things change or as business grows or as relationships change. The scope of that assessment may look different in the future. Undergoing a readiness assessment really gives you the answers to the quiz before the quiz. You understand what all the requirements are going to be, what the scope of that assessment is going to look like and then ultimately be in a position to understand where your initial gaps are relative to the assessment you need to produce within the marketplace. It's also going to give you insight into what you need to remediate, which is the next step. Again, like any assessment, in order to achieve the requirements that you need to achieve, there's going to be some work that needs to occur. And that chevron is probably the one that has the highest level of flexibility in either direction. You may find after going through a readiness assessment that you're in really good shape, that you have a very strong security and privacy program in place, and there's not a lot that you need to do in order to get you to the level of a validated assessment or a certification. Some organizations find that there are multiple months that need to be spent in order to remediate or fix those gaps that exist in order to achieve that minimum bar to submit for certification. Part of that process is also in looking for third parties or partners that could help them remediate or gain further insight like Tripwire into what's going on within their organization. Next, what we typically see and recommend after you've gone through and corrected any gaps that may have existed is to undergo another checkpoint. Before you start the official testing phase and validation, Help yourself understand, have we actually remediated the issues that we sought out to remediate based upon the solutions that we put in place? And then lastly is when organizations will engage an independent assessor to go through this third-party audit process to validate what they have put in place relative to the control requirements that come out of their risk assessment process in the scoping phase. As organizations go through this process, an, an option and, and another tool that is available for organizations is our SaaS-based platform referred to as MyCSF. There are a number of different benefits that organizations leverage and see by using the platform. It is not required to have in order to undergo a high trust assessment. However, as I mentioned before, many organizations do elect to get a subscription to the software to help guide them through that process. It also helps them in working more collaboratively with their independent third-party assessor. It rolls forward documentation on a year-over-year -year basis, 
um, and also provides all the updates to the framework within the platform. More information is available on our website relative to the tool. Again, it is not required in order to undergo an assessment, but there are many benefits that organizations see from having a subscription to the platform. I appreciate the time and sharing this information with you today relative to the different programs, tools, and solutions that HITRUST has in the marketplace and to help any organization across any industry, but especially within the healthcare industry. Again, everything that we do is focused on risk. How do we help organizations address that risk in the most efficient and effective way possible and give you options so that you can produce assessment and assurance reports that are of the highest level of reliability, provides the highest level of transparency, and can be used with multiple stakeholders after executing just one assessment. Here are some different resources where you can find more information around our programs, including our third-party risk management methodology and how organizations are leveraging that to augment or complement their current third-party risk management program that they have in place. This is just a list of our upcoming events where we will be. I would welcome the opportunity to connect further with anyone about any of our programs at these events. We will be at HIMSS this year as we have in prior years, so please come by, visit with us, learn more. We also hold monthly community extension programs for which there's a list on, on our website to see locations across the country and soon to be international in order to learn more information. And we have our own annual conference that will be in May of this year in Grapevine, Texas, um, that also has a pre-conference focused on third-party risk management and cyber risk management as well. As I close and before I hand it back over to Anika, I will say one of the things that, that you've noticed that, that we do not have in place, which is one of the primary drivers for working very closely with Tripwire, is continuous controls monitoring. What we have found is that organizations that are able to achieve high trust compliance, and again, in, in the spirit of doing it in the most efficient and effective way possible, um, are leveraging some form of continuous controls monitoring and working with a partner that can help enable them in an automated fashion achieve compliance with those requirements on an ongoing basis. So with that, again, I thank you for being able to share information about our programs today and would love to hand it back to Anika to take you through some more details around how Tripwire has designed programs to help enable you from a continuous controls monitoring perspective relative to the HITRUST CSF. Thank you, Mike. We are very excited also about a partnership with HITRUST and this helps us provide healthcare organizations and other organizations with continuous monitoring and out-of-the-box reports leveraging Tripart Enterprise for the HITRUST CSF. Earlier I mentioned the four steps that Tripwire helps you achieve compliance with. And for HITRUST specifically, we currently have support for the CSF version 9.1, and this will continue to be updated with newer versions of the HITRUST CSF. We have 75 HITRUST policies spread across 25 different platforms. And each platform has a policy for level one, level two, and level three of the high trust CSF. Previously, I mentioned that Tripwire Enterprise has the industry's largest policy and platform coverage. And here are a list of platforms that we have coverage for, for high trust specifically. And we can also add additional support for other platforms as requested. If you don't see a platform on here that you have in your environment, we're happy to expand coverage for those platforms. So Tripwire Enterprise can help you demonstrate compliance with HITRUST CSF. For current Tripwire customers, the HITRUST CSF policy content is available on the Tripwire Customer Center, or the TCC as it's also known as. We provide uh, out-of-the-box reports to help you reduce the time spent on compliance. 
uh, for other standards as well and also for HIDRA specifically. And then we also provide detailed data for audits, uh, providing critical information such as who changed what, when the change happened. And then lastly, we also provide continuous monitoring to help you not only achieve compliance at a point in time, but maintain that compliance over time. If you have any questions for either myself or Mike, please put your questions in the question widget so that we can answer them during the Q&A. Thank you again for your time, and, and thank you, Mike, for joining us on this webcast. Thank you again for joining us on the webcast. It looks like we have a few questions that have come in. So I'll I'll read them out and then I'll direct to uh, the right person to answer. Also joining us in addition to Mike, we also have Jason Paul from iTrust, who is the Chief Information Security Officer and Vice President of Standards. So let's go through the questions. First question is, what type of third party assessment non high trust, considering that would be a conflict of interest, has been performed on the hacks to ensure its security? So yeah, Anika, this is Mike. I, I can take that one. So when you look at the high trust assessment exchange, uh, that platform actually sits within an environment that has several third-party assurance attestations over it. Uh, those include SOC 2, ISO, and a series of others. Um, obviously, those standards are included within the, the HITRUST framework, and it does actually have a HITRUST certification. Uh, but to the point, there are a series of other third-party assurance attestation and opinion-based reports that are over that platform and that service that are available. Great. Thank you. Another question is, and this kind of ties in actually to what you just said, Mike, is uh, the question says, we currently perform an SSAE 18, SOC 2, Type 2 third party audit annually. Is there a mapping from SOC 2 to high trust so that I don't have to validate the same control twice? Uh, great question. The answer is yes, that there is. Um, there is a mapping not only on the AICPA website, but also on our website and is part of the, the framework where you can see the mapping against all the criteria and principles um, relative to the SOC 2 standard. So the idea being that an organization can assess once and report many. So assess against that one standard set of requirements and pivot and produce any type of report that they may need to produce, including a SOC 2 report. So that is something that is available uh, for the security, availability, confidentiality, and privacy principles. The privacy principle has not been formally reviewed by the AICPA yet. However, we have mapped it accordingly. One more question is, is there any work being done on being able to provide application-specific integration with Tripwire Enterprise, such as the various EMR applications, monitoring and detecting changes in the EMR application of the underlying OS? I can answer that. So we have looked into uh, much more close uh, integrations with the EMR systems out there. It's just been a little bit challenging because it requires you know, a partnership with the EMR vendors, and we haven't uh, been able to really gain traction there. So um, I know this question is from Addy. Uh, so if you have any um, ideas or, or um, references you can put us in touch with, we'd be, I'd be happy to follow up on those leads there. But I mean, as you mentioned, we, we do have coverage for the EMR system for monitoring the underlying OS and then the S the data. Day. But you know, as this partnership yeah. with High Trust, uh, just one more thing, as this partnership with High Trust shows, like we are, you know, that's our focus, right? Is to continue to to build out those partnerships. But go on, Mike. 
Yeah, Nika, and I, I was going to say we work very closely um, with all the, the large EHR organizations, so um, Cerner, Epic, Allscripts, Athena, for, for example. So they, they have all adopted and integrated our, our framework. Uh, some of them actually have certified environments. So to your point, with, through this partnership, um, I think that's going to lead to further automation relative to those environments, especially considering they're already leveraging the framework. Yeah, that's great. Then we have a few other questions. Well, how can I leverage these programs to help manage my vendors or third party? So, Anika, maybe I could start there. You know, when you when you look at the, the high trust programs and our third party risk management methodology, which I, I think we covered at, at a high level to, during the, the webinar, but um, leveraging the, the solutions and the tools such as the assessment exchange, uh, which is hinged on or, or based on the foundation of the framework, the assessment methodology, and the assurance program, but you're in a position to augment or complement what you're already doing from a third-party risk management perspective. Some organizations are actually replacing a lot of the non-value-add, commoditized type activities that they're performing as part of their third-party assurance program. Um, and in addition to that, you know, and Nika, I'll let you speak to this in a little more detail, but I'm, I'm sure you can leverage high trust related solutions to monitor those certain configurations and compliance with high trust related controls associated with vendor type um, solutions or services. Right, exactly. So as long as you know, Tripwire Enterprise can monitor those assets, we can ensure that you're aligning with the high trust CSF. So uh, for example, Tripwire Enterprise can provide agent, both agent-based and agent-less monitoring of critical assets. So again, as long as we can monitor those assets, we can definitely provide that alignment with the high trust and another question is, what process does Tripwire and HITRUST have to continue to update the framework? So, Mike, I'll let you start, and then I can um, add more color if needed. Yeah, sure. You know, I, I think one of the most important things of, of this partnership, right, Anika, when, when we came together and built it was, um, obviously, when we think about the different authoritative sources, the need for compliance, the changes in regulations, uh, the introduction of, of new types of regulations, which seem to be coming out every day, um, we needed to have a process in place to make sure that, that we were current. Um, on the high trust side of the house, you know, that's something that, that we've had in place for years in terms of keeping the framework up to date with, with Jason, my colleague, who, who's on the phone, r runs that entire program. And so part of the partnership that we put in place is ensuring that we have an iterative process with Tripwire as there's changes to our framework, those are incorporated appropriately within your solutions. We're doing the appropriate quality assurance review together to make sure that those configurations and solutions are updated accordingly. Right, exactly. And just echo what you said, you know, that's why we're so excited about this partnership is because we can continue to, to ensure that we have the most up-to-date framework a version of the HITRA CSF. And then even as you know, our customers use that content, we can uh, extend the, the platform coverage as needed, it's again, to ensure that we're uh, constantly getting value from the high trust CSF. And actually leading into that question is the question about how, where can I get uh, the high trust content to our enterprise, and is there an additional cost for the high trust content? So like our, like the other frameworks and, and, and standards that we have available in Tripwire Enterprise, this is just available to existing uh, TE customers on the Tripwire Customer Center. So there's no additional cost. You can just go there and uh, download that. And then one more question is, uh, is, is this available as part of ExpertOps? ExpertOps is their managed service offering, uh, for those who don't know. And, and yes, absolutely, the high trust content is part of uh, is delivered as part of expert ops along with all the other you know content for all the other standards that we have. Okay, 
If there are any additional questions, uh, let us know. Yeah, and, and Anika, may, maybe I'll just add, um, you know, we 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 are going to be partnering with, with you, you guys and, and Tripwire just so the audience knows um, through various market-facing events and, and conferences. So there will be opportunities to, to talk to us collectively, uh, one of which will be at, at our upcoming conference in, in May of, of this year uh, where, where Tripwire will be there with us. Um, so we would be happy to entertain any in-person discussions as we are working together at, at various market-facing events uh, throughout the year. Right. And if you can't wait to see us in person, uh, our email is available on the screen, so feel free to uh, send any additional questions. Thank you all for joining us for, for this webinar, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.